Hello fellow FBI managers and welcome to a game week 10 review and a game week 11 preview so we'll start by having a look back at game week 10 before looking at the predictions and looking forward to predictions for game week 11 uh, and as you can see game week 10 57 points we're just above the average here but the key thing here uh, for me is you can see here we've done it we've finally done it it's taken just over 25% of the season and we have finally finally picked the correct captain it has absolutely happened it is panic stations everywhere finally I have chosen and received the most points from the best player from the best choice in my team absolutely unbelievable scenes there Raheem Sterling uh, I mean Granted, I had to captain him uh, about seven of the game weeks to finally get it, but we've done it. There we go. Completed FPL. We can rest in peace from now on. Uh, but going for the rest of the team then, Salah getting that penalty. Uh, good to see him back on track as well. Kevin De Bruyne with an assist. We'll go there later on when we're talking about our review of predictions there. Uh, a lot of people felt a bit annoyed about that. Uh, Mount and Abraham both getting an assist. Siungchu, part of that 9-0 drumming. What a crazy week it has been. I did put this in one of my tweets, but we've had um, a 9-0 ridiculous scoreline. We've had uh, Luca Dean doing his traditional absolutely outrageous spin the wheel, whatever points is he going to get this week. At one point, he was well ahead getting an assist. Next news, he's in minus points because the goal's conceded, and then he obviously gets the own goal as well. So uh, typical Luca Dean. So expect about a 15-point haul from him somehow in the next game week. Uh, but the issue that we're going to be having here, uh, it's going to be Callum Wilson. A lot of people brought him in, myself included, uh, before that game um, against uh, Norwich. Uh, so he blanked against Arsenal and then Norwich at home. Bournemouth haven't scored at all in the last three games. And that is pretty worrying uh, for Bournemouth. But also for us, Callum Wilson owners who... We thought he'd changed. He's keeping fit. He's keeping healthy. Had a great start to the season. And unfortunately, he is starting to let people down. And with the likes of Jamie Vardy being so popular now, a lot of people are jumping ship on Callum Wilson yet again. Still top 8% ownership. Uh, he's not on my uh, worried list right now. I still think he can do something at home against United. And a Newcastle and Wolves isn't the worst. Um, I'm not in a rush to take him out just yet. Um, but that's going to be it, really. And then Rico sat on a point uh, on my bench with five points. I had a little bit of faith with uh, Cantwell. Um, I put him as the, the second choice sub over Rico. Uh, because you can see Lundstrom came in uh, and that was pretty much it. It was a decent game week. I probably would have preferred perhaps Kevin De Bruyne keeping that goal, but Green Arrows as well, first time in a long time. And we've gone from about 2.2 million to 1.65, 1.67 million. So I also checked if you are losing heart with your overall rank, Try not to, because from what I saw, I am literally like 30 points outside the top 500k. And that isn't, that's a 1.1 million jump in just 30 points. So if I just have, don't just put it on one game week. Don't just say, okay, I'm going to make up 30 points in one game week. But if I have two or three pretty good high, just above average, so say 57 points, 49 is the average. If I have just a few more weeks like this, you know, you'll slowly creep up the rankings. Don't uh, think that everyone's so separated this year. It's still really packed tight between sort of 250K and 2.5 million. So try not to lose heart so far. If you're making the right decisions, uh, if you're having faith with your players, you've not got that many fires to put out, then uh, try not to worry about it. Just enjoy it. Or do what I did last year, which didn't quite pay off. I finished about 700K, but take those extra risks. You know, don't go with Liverpool and City players. Go with, you know, Make it fun for yourself. An idea that I had is, um, so I'm English, go for an only England team or a UK Great Britain team. Uh, go for teams that, that players that only play for teams in blue kits or red kits or a French team or a Belgian team or an EU team or a South American team. You know, if there's a lot of other ways to have fun in FPL. It's not all about sort of coming number one. Uh, do what you do and do how you enjoy it. Um, uh, off the top of my head, I quite like watching the FPL Dare videos. Uh, he does his FPL based on his community's dares. They'll say, okay, you know, pick a name, uh, throw a dart, 
um at the globe and then whatever country you land on you've got to captain that player kind of thing and you know it's extremely fun and just as exciting as it is for everyone else so try not to lose heart find ways to have fun because uh, it's football and at the end of the day it's a game try to enjoy it try not to let it get you down too much uh, i already made my transfers for this game week i had to i had to go friday transfers caught me off guard um after the leicester Southampton debacle um, and I had to go on the Saturday after the games uh, and you can see now I'm, I'm really happy with this team uh, what happens is uh, Otamendi went out it seems like he could have lost his place and Willems the Newcastle players come in just because I'm pretty comfortable TAA is going to start every game uh, Sionchu for the next sort of eight game weeks when Leicester have got that good run He's pretty much a staple in there as well. And then I've only really got to choose that last place. And Lundstrom and Rico have been really great this season. So if I throw in Willems in there, who's been a pretty exciting uh, fullback for Newcastle. He's done pretty well so far this season. So if I have that 4.5, that gave me that extra money to go straight up to T elements. And the good thing in uh, living where I am in the world now, when I wake up, it's before the price rises. So I saw he was 6.4 million. I had the exact money to go Ottomendi to Willems and uh, Cantwell to Tielemans. Because the Friday, uh, Friday ones really got me because Greenwood went down to 4.3 million. Cantwell went down. Ottomendi went down. Uh, I lost a lot of team value, so I had to go. Uh, and again, I don't regret it. Uh, I backed uh, T. Elements a lot last season. I know uh, some of the game weeks this year haven't been great from him, but he seems to really be coming into his form now. 11 points against Southampton, which granted is a freak result, but nine points against Burnley the week before, and he just looks class. And I'm in a situation where I want to have players in my team where I look at them and think, they're great. They do really good. I like watching them. That's why I have Firmino on my side. It didn't pay off. But I like watching these players. There's no one in this side that I think is a particularly poor player. And hopefully these boys are going to get me up the rankings. So the move next week that I was... The simple one that I told people a long time ago. It was going to be a simple Raheem Sterling out and Sadio Mane in. Um, not, not because Sterling's not done well for me. I've had him all season. I just feel with... Um, not even necessarily the rotation worry with Manchester City. I just feel that uh, Liverpool fixtures coming up, you can see, yes, they've got City. I am bringing in for the City game. I know that's crazy. I was going to do like a one-week punt on someone like Anthony Martial. Uh, however, with Sterling being 12 million and Mane being 11.9, I'm worried that uh, if Mane scores a hat to against Aston Villa, his price is going to go up to like 12, 12.1, and I won't be able to afford him. And I've been saying for weeks and weeks, I want Mane in my side. And I still think he can do something against Manchester City and their defence. Uh, and then after that, you know, it's really good fixtures. And I love the idea of having Salah and Mane in my side. I know a lot of people will say, well, we can't captain both of them. Um, it's a lot of money tied up there in Liverpool, but I just feel... That, that's just how I feel. That's how I want to play the game. So that's going to be my choice. The second option that I had was going to be something like Sterling down to David Silva. And then maybe even someone like Mason Mount um, going to um, Anthony Martial. And then that would... Because I like the idea of Martial. We spoke about him last week. A lot of people are speaking about him now. Uh, but that gives me 3.4 million left over. That's still a, a really lovely midfield. Uh, and my idea was either Callum Wilson can go up to a Kane and a Bamiang, um, or if I don't really believe in Tammy Abraham anymore, he could go for a, a premium striker. Um, another idea would have been, because I'll have another Liverpool slot, um, that Willems would go up to uh, Robertson, so I'd have TAA, Robertson, and Salah in my side, uh, and that would also still give me a, a little bit of money to play with. So it's kind of a... It only gives me a million, which isn't great. I can't really upgrade Wilson to anyone. I could do him to Rashford. Uh, but it's the idea of, do I just go Mane and go really big in the mid uh, in the midfield? Or do I put Sterling down to David Silva, who I think is fantastic, um, and have a, just a, a more balanced side? Um, so we'll, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. I don't have to make that decision this week. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think about that. Should we just do uh, Sterling over to Mane and just have 0 0.1 million in the bank and have a Salah Mane uh, combination in that midfield as a really big sword? Um, or 
Sterling down to David Silva because I'm not going to be captain in Man City for the next few games. You can see Liverpool away. Uh, so this week, Raheem Sterling's going to be my captain. But then Liverpool away, Chelsea, Newcastle away isn't easy. Burnley away isn't, isn't easy. United, Arsenal, Leicester, Wolves, they're not easy games. I think there are better captaincy options out there um, and easier fixtures out there. So do I put him to David Silva because I think David Silva is still a great asset and spread that money around or should we just go for money? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about that. Uh, and we'll move on to our review of the predictions in the last game week. So in the last game week, you can see my player to pick was David Silva. Uh, he scored an incredible, well-earned, well-deserved goal uh, to get nine points uh, and a, a clean sheet point as well. Uh, didn't quite get his double-digit haul up there. Uh, of course, I'm joking about the haul. Kevin De Bruyne, it looked like he scored it, and then they reviewed it afterwards, uh, and it seemed to have come off David Silva's toes, which a lot of people are also saying that, well, if they're going to change that, then technically it's not a goal because... If he touches it, Raheem Sterling is offside. Either way, uh, even if it was uh, going to be not getting that goal, uh, it's, it's lucky. I know a lot of people are angry, but he got the touch, and uh, that's all that matters, I guess. So David Silva pulled through. Uh, so did Madison. Eight points, one goal, one clean sheet as well. And people were very disappointed in Madison. It took a long time for him to get on the score sheet. And when you see Leicester scoring nine goals in a single game, you sort of would be betting on Madison to having at least a couple of goals or a couple of assists. But still, eight points from your midfield is not a, a terrible result. And Callum Wilson, again, one point, 73 minutes he came off as a sub uh, against Watford. That's three blanks in a row. Arsenal, Norwich and Watford. And if you're blanking against those teams, Bournemouth as an entire team are blanking against those teams, then that is an issue and the troll is well and truly back. Uh, Jimenez went to Newcastle, 90 minutes, but only got two points. Uh, Wood didn't even play at all. He, he he had a knock. So did Barnes as well. They had a little bit of an issue. Both strikers were looking like they were going to be out. And Martial, I said I wasn't going to bring him into the side just yet because he played just a couple minutes against Liverpool. But I did recommend him uh, as a real differential uh, and he got six points, which is a little bit weird because he played 74 minutes. He got one goal, uh, a clean sheet point as well, because remember, he's a midfielder playing out of position, uh, and a penalty miss. So if you would have bagged that as well, it's a double-digit haul, uh, and he's uh, having an absolute blinding game week. Unfortunately, there was two penalty misses in there. I say penalty misses. Let's let's give Tim Krul his credit. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people complaining, saying, like, look, yeah, good saves, but he's technically off his line, but... Change that rule. I think that's ridiculous. I'm not going to get into an off-topic debate, but, you know, taking just like a tiny bit forward off the line when he's jumping to the side, credit where it's due. Two wonderful saves there from Krull off the penalties. So 50-50, uh, half right, half wrong last week, and I don't think that was a pretty bad return. I can't help Chris Wood getting injured after I make the video. Uh, Jimenez going to Newcastle, that was a tough call. I still think he's going to be a good asset for the next sort of seven weeks or so. Um, Madison getting Wilson, though, that is going to be an issue for a lot of people who brought him in, as people like me that brought him in for the, uh, the particularly the Watford and Norwich games. But I still think, you know, I still think he's going to be a good player for, for the season. Uh, I've got no real plans to take him out. Yeah, I could drop him down to Jimenez, but what am I really going to get with that sort of 0 0.7, 0 0.8 million? Not a lot, really, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, and looking into the predictions for this game week, see, when I came across players to pick, I wasn't, I think, again, I didn't want to be too obvious. I know Man City is there, but Man City is there in, in the sense that I think every asset is an option here. There's a lot of people debating about Sergio Aguero. Should you hold? Should you sell? I think if you've got him right now, you hold him. Uh, if you don't have him, then you don't bring him in. Um, because... I think I do think he's gonna play, but the thing that sort of gets to me and a lot of people is we all have these ideas, we all have these rationales, we all say, you know, oh, uh, what Pep's doing is he'll play a player for two games, so he'll play him in the cup and then in the league and then rest them, or he'll play him in the Champions League and they'll miss the league and then they'll play the cup and then they'll be back again. Look, we don't know. It's as simple as that. We can we can pull up old statistics which don't correlate. We can have all these guesses we can say oh well sterling doesn't play after an international break uh he doesn't play after the champions league well he did last week didn't he so let's just let's just have the punt go for it if you think that he's going to play and he doesn't well that happens but i'm not going to sit here and tell you sergio guerrero will 100 percent play this week 
And that's the risk that you took when you got Aguero. That's the risk that I took when I took Raheem Sterling or when we took Kevin De Bruyne. We didn't think Kevin De Bruyne was going to get rested against Norwich and he did. This is Pep. This is Pep Roulette. This is why we make these jokes and these memes because we really don't know. Uh, I personally think that they're all going to be playing this game week. Uh, I could be wrong. It could be Jesus. Um, but I'd be surprised if, if Aguero scores, I think it was two goals he just got against Southampton in the in the cup. Why wouldn't you play him against pretty much the same players that he's just scored two goals against? Um, Sterling got 100% rest, uh, so I would genuinely be surprised if he got dropped. But again, people saying, well, he misses one game, he'll miss both to get a super long rest and or they play in the cup so they can get that match fitness back. We, we really don't know, but I still think that Captaincy wise, you cannot really look past Man City. If you've got Sterling or De Bruyne or Aguero or David Silva, even, I would be captain in one of those players. And you can see all by himself underneath, it's uh, it's a Bamiang. Uh, 11.1 million, 27.9% ownership, which still feels pretty low. Uh, similar to Wilson, he's got three blanks in a row now, but Wolves. Uh, seem to be having a little bit of problem at the back at the moment. Uh, Bolly looks like he's out long term. Uh, Bennett is a doubt. I think then Donka was pushed back there a little bit. So with that kind of issue uh, with Wolves not really having a defense, they usually play uh, like a three with the wing backs, right? So if Bennett and Bolly are out and there's not really a lot of cover there, and people like Dendonka playing back, I think that someone like Lac uh, sorry, someone like Aubameyang or even Lacazette would have a pretty nice time there. And uh, with Lacazette now back in the side and Aubameyang and Lacazette getting used to each other playing again, um, I think that's going to be fine. Also, maybe a statement at home with the whole Granite Xhaka situation. Maybe they want to go out there and put on a performance. So I do think Aubameyang is going to have... Um, a pretty decent game week. And you see differentials again. I, I can't look past Martial at the minute as my number one choice. 7.6 million, 4.6% ownership for a Manchester United player. He's already had a price rise, which has annoyed a lot of people. Uh, but he's back after a long time uh, and he's got his goal and a penalty miss. Uh, he's back to being out of position. He's, he's playing as the outlet up front for Manchester United. Really good fixtures with Bournemouth, Brighton, Sheffield United and uh, Aston Villa in the next four game weeks. It's similar to Chelsea. If you're looking at someone like Tammy Abraham for 7.7 .7 million as, uh, as the main striker for Chelsea, a top six side. United, we make jokes, they're mid-table, but they are, they're a top six side. They're a top eight side at the very least. And you're getting their main striker who's in midfield out of position for 7.6 million and only 4.6% ownership with good fixtures. I think it's incredibly difficult to look past Anthony Martial. Uh, another option here is going to be more pay at Brighton, 1.2% ownership, uh, 6 million, uh, two goals in three games, uh, and he's against a shocking Norwich defence. It's always difficult to ignore any striker against the Norwich defence. Um, and he's had a lot of shots and he's had a lot of chances, but poor conversion, that is his issue. Um, but if you don't shoot, you don't score. Uh, he's had 15 attempts in total in the last four game weeks. He's only scored two goals. So he's a very good third striker option if you're playing three up front. Uh, or even as a second striker. Uh, so if you've got Vardy and Morpé playing together, and that allows you to get a better midfielder or a defender. Uh, he's good. And he seems nailed on. I know a lot of people are liking the 4.5 million uh, Connolly option. But it feels like Morpé is the main striker at Brighton right now. Uh, and he's doing pretty well, and he's got a really good price point. He's definitely worth his six million price price tag. Uh, and finally, you can see uh, William seven million, just two point three percent ownership, and, and he's perhaps the most overlooked Chelsea asset right now. Uh, it's all season. It's been all about Mount. Abraham, Tamori. Recently, we've been talking about Hudson Odoi. We've got Pulisic. People have been talking about the start of the season and then last week with his hat trick. Uh, people are again talking about the likes of Alonso coming back to his old kind of form. And we're all kind of sleeping on, on, on William, I think. Uh, uh, two goals and two assists in the last four game weeks. Uh, and two of those game weeks were double digit hauls. Uh, and I think it's that huge differential. Uh, I think a Almost half of the game now has Tammy Abraham. Uh, I know it's a high percentage that has got Mason Mount. I'll just double check that. 37.4%. And I believe it's like 25% of that have both Mount and uh, Abraham. And people were looking towards Hudson-Odoi if they didn't have Tomori. Uh, but the issue with that now is 
rotation. William could get rotated as well, but I feel that Mount plus Abraham plus possibly William would be an incredible shield and sword situation. So that's going to be it for this game week. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video uh, and I should be back streaming again on Friday. It was really great to, to talk and see people on Friday. Uh, should be about uh, the clocks have just gone back in the UK. So it will be around lunchtime this time at 12 or one o'clock in the afternoon on friday so hopefully you guys will join me then uh and hopefully you find this video interesting or you enjoy it and if you do enjoy it and you do find it interesting then please leave a like and maybe subscribe follow me on twitter as well rob wd 90 uh i always post could be something random but usually do with football and fpl stuff as well so it'd be great to see you on there too so thanks a lot for watching this video and as always have a good one